packet. Uh, there's a card in there. If you'd fill that out, let us know your phone number, and Pastor will give you a call when he returns from his vacation. We also want to welcome those who are joining us on live stream and also on our Redeemer Lutheran radio. I also want to say again a thank you to Meg Johnson for playing the organ for us. I think she did an outstanding job last week, considering it's been almost 30 years since she's played. So we welcome her and we look forward to her music today. So on this fifth Sunday after Pentecost, we celebrate the blessings of freedom which we enjoy as a nation by God's grace and his favor. As a country, we face a lot of challenges, a lot of enemies from out, without and from within. So let us call upon the Lord for his protection and blessings. May he bless our nation and for him to be the Lord that we know that he is. So please uh, remain seated as we sing our first hymn, which is Come Thou Almighty King, found on page 904 in the Lutheran service book. and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. Please rise, kneel, or stand as we confess our sins.
Almighty God, our Maker and Redeemer, we poor sinners confess unto you that we are by nature sinful and unclean, and that we have sinned against you by thought, word, and deed. Wherefore, we flee for refuge to your infinite mercy, seeking and imploring your grace for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ. O most merciful God, who has given your only begotten Son to die for us, have mercy upon us, and for his sake grant us remission of all our sins, and by your Holy Spirit increase in us to knowledge of you and of your will to obedience to your word, to the end that by your grace we may come to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Upon this, your confession, I, as a called servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you, and in the stead and by the command of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, he forgives you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. And with your Let us pray. O oh God, because your abiding presence always goes with us, keep us aware of your daily mercies that we may live secure and content in your eternal love. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Our lecturer this morning is Kathy Cobb. Good morning. Good morning. 
Good morning. The Old Testament reading today is from Jeremiah, chapter 28, verses 5 through 9. Then the prophet Jeremiah spoke to Hananiah, the prophet, in the presence of the priest and all the people who were standing in the house of the Lord. And the prophet Jeremiah said, Amen. May the Lord do so. May the Lord make the words that you have prophesied come true and bring back to this place from Babylon the vessels of the house of the Lord and all the exiles. Yet hear now this word that I speak in your hearing and in the hearing of all the people, the prophets who preceded you and me from ancient times prophesied war, famine, pestilence against many countries and great kingdoms. As for the prophet who prophesies peace, when the word of that prophet comes to pass, then it will be known that the Lord has truly sent the prophet. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle lesson is found in Romans, verse 7, cha- I'm sorry, chapter 7, verse 1 through 13. Do you not know, brothers? For I am speaking to those who know the law, that the law is binding on a person only as long as he lives. Thus a married woman is bound by law to her husband while he lives. But if her husband dies, she is released from the law of marriage. Accordingly, she will be called an adulteress if she lives with another man while her husband is alive. But if her husband dies, she is free from that law. And if she marries another man, she is not an adulteress. Likewise, my brother, you also have died to the law through the body of Christ, so that you may belong to another, to him who has been raised from the dead, in order that we may bear fruit for God. For while we are living in the flesh, Our sinful passions aroused by the law were at work in our members to bear fruit for death. But now we are released from the law, having died to that which held us captive, so that we serve not under the old written code, but in the new life of the Spirit. What then shall we say? That the law is sin? By no means. Yet it had not been for the law, I would not have known sin. I would not have known what it is to covet if the law had not said, you shall not covet. But sin, seizing an opportunity through the commandment, produced in me all kinds of covetousness. Apart from the law, sin lies dead. I was once alive apart from the law, but when the commandment came, sin came alive and I died. The very commandment that promised life proved to be death to me. For sin, seizing an opportunity through the commandment, deceived me and through it killed me. So the law is holy, and the commandment is holy and righteous and good. Did that which is good then bring death to me? By no means, it was sin, producing death in me through what is good. In order that sin might be shown to be sin, and through the commandment might come sinful beyond measure. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 10th chapter. Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set man against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law and a person's enemies 
will be those of his own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me, and whoever does not take his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds his life will lose it, and whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Whoever receives you receives me, and whoever receives me receives him who sent me. The one who receives a prophet because he is a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And the one who receives a righteous person because he is a righteous person will receive a righteous person's reward. And whoever gives one of these little ones even a cup of cold water because he is a disciple, truly I say to you, he will by no means lose his reward. This is the gospel of our Lord. Please uh, recite with me the Apostles' Creed found on the inside back cover of the Lutheran service book. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Please join with me in singing the sermon hymn, the battle hymn of the Republic.
Last Sunday, we learned what a disciple is. We also learned what the mission of a disciple is. We also learned what the training of a disciple is. And we also learned that the mission now belongs to us. The text for today's sermon, the theme of which is going public, is taken from Matthew 10, verses 32 and 33, where it reads, Jesus says, Everyone who acknowledges me before men, I also will acknowledge before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, I also will deny before my Father who is in heaven. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of salvation through your Son, Jesus Christ. As we come before you in prayer today, we acknowledge our need for you in our lives and the importance of acknowledging you before others as well. Lord, we confess that we can be, that it can be tempting to make our faith one that we keep to ourselves, especially in a word that, world that often values conformity over standing out for what we believe in. Yet we know that you have called us to be a light into the darkness and to share your love and truth with others. So today, Lord, we pray for the courage to acknowledge you before others, no matter what the circumstances. Help us to speak the truth with love, to live lives that reflect your character, and to be whole, bold enough to share our faith with those around us. We ask for your protection and guidance as we navigate through a world that can be hostile to your message. Help us to remember that you are with us always and that nothing can separate us from your love. May our lives be a living testimony of your goodness and grace, and may others see us and you as the followers of Christ. We thank you for the privilege of being your children and for the salvation that you have provided for us. We pray these things, O oh Lord, in your holy name. Amen. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thanks to the marvel of the media we have today, you've been exposed to a concept already of going public to such an extent that you may be wondering who's next. It seems that we've heard so many people go public with information they've been hiding for many, many years, from people confessing their addictions onto the road of their re recovery. People were revealing being victimized by those in prominent positions. People going public with gender identity whatever that means, and so forth. So we're constantly bombarded with revelations of sins in the lives of rich, famous, and prestigious people. Suddenly, many grasp in horror, shocked that these people could act this way, as if the marvel of media automatically turn them into saints somehow. Immediately, the judgments, the comments, the opinions, well, they all just fly. Many times, without discernment, even to the point of destroying the reputations and the lives of many. But, what happens when someone goes public with their faith in Jesus Christ. I guess it depends on how one understands going public with your faith in Jesus. 
Does it mean you confess your faith in God, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, stating that you will suffer all, even death, rather than fall away from him? In our tradition, that usually happens within the context of the worshiping Christian congregation with the confirmation rite and is celebrated by all who are present. If one understands going public with your faith in Jesus as freely speaking his word in daily vocations of your life, expressing the conviction that everyone needs to repent their sins and believe in him to be saved. Well, creation and celebration may be the furthest thing from people's minds who hear that confession. Because as you know, we all spend a lot of time creating when in fact everything is put there for us in Christ. So, instead, you may be attacked verbally, even to the point of being physically attacked. And as Jesus spoke to his disciples about going public through the towns of Israel, proclaiming him as the Christ, he told them straight away what they would encounter. They would encounter persecution on many, many levels. They would be delivered over to the courts. They'd be flogged in their synagogues. They would experience family members killing each other. And not because they're a dysfunctional family. They would be hated by all for his name's sake. They'd be accused of working for the devil. Wow, that really sounds like a, the kind of group that we'd like to join, right? Why would there be so much animosity toward the followers of Jesus? Because of the devil and our sinful hearts. Before destroying life on earth with the flood, we see in Genesis 5, where it says that God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and every intention of thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Hundreds of years later, Jesus described the sinful heart, stating that out of the heart comes evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false witness, slander, and it just goes on and on. The heart lost in the darkness and slavery of sin loves sin. It loves to hear about people's sins and hates to be told that it has to repent of its sin and accountability to anyone, let alone Jesus Christ. At the same time, it also thinks that it's always justified in its sin. No wonder the scripture so many times refers to sinners as hard-hearted as we see in uh, Zechariah, Mark, Romans, and Ephesians. When the followers of Jesus reveals people's sinful heart expressing itself in words and actions its natural inclination is to fight back. That's where persecution comes in. Notice what Jesus said in verse 32 of our text. Everyone who acknowledges me before men, I also will acknowledge before my Father who is in heaven. How do we do this? To acknowledge Jesus is not simply mentioning his name. 
have a liking for him as a great teacher or acknowledge him as a historical figure. It is to express publicly that Jesus is Lord. It's a public expression of conviction that we confess in our Nicene Creed, that there is only one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, God of God, just on and on with proclaiming who He is. So He is begotten of His Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not being not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men in our salvation. He came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary. And he was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And on that third day he rose again according to our scriptures, and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again in glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. I think sometimes when we say the creeds, we say them way too fast. We don't listen to what we're saying. So I invite you sometime today, take a few minutes and read through the Apostles' Creed and the Nicene Creed. Think about what it's saying to us. You see, this Jesus of ours is totally unique as God in the flesh. To acknowledge Jesus before men, i.e., openly confess him in the presence of others is saying that his person and work defines your life now and into eternity. It's not saying that you've made Jesus Lord of your life, and it is not saying that you were brought up in a church or a member of a church and so forth. It is confessing who Jesus actually is rather than whom you feel that you made him out to be. It is confessing your sins and accountability to his atoning sacrifice on the cross, and then confessing that he is the resurrected Lord of all. The 10th chapter of Romans, verse 9 and 10, puts it this way. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart, one believes and is justified. And with the mouth, one confesses and is saved. You're simply confessing the truth in the person and the works of Jesus Christ which the Holy Spirit places in your heart. The persecution which could accompany going public with your faith in Jesus, it does involve risk. Even the possibility of losing your life. Are you willing to do that for Him? And reap the reward that He promises. It's a very difficult thought since we invest so much of ourselves into the lives and to our families' lives and our relationships and the stuff that we have. And in the 8th chapter of Mark, verse 38, 
Jesus speaks of being ashamed of him and his words, his teachings. In this adulterous and sinful generation that we live in now, why would a Christian deny Jesus or be ashamed of him and his teachings? Because the devil is constantly working through the sinful influences of a sin-darkened world to bring forth a denial of Jesus Christ as Lord from our sinful hearts. Chapter 5 of 1 Peter, verses 8 and 9 says, well, actually it instructs Christians as it describes the efforts of the devil through persecution. So be sober-minded, be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. Resist him in firm faith, knowing that the same kinds of suffering are being experienced by your brotherhood throughout the entire world. It's not just you. It's not just me. It's every Christian in this sinful world. The suffering referred to here is persecution because of our public confession of Jesus as our Lord. In the 10th chapter of Matthew, verse 28, Jesus commanded his disciples, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid of those who can kill the body but cannot kill the soul. You remember that from last week's sermon? Instead, we are to fear him who can destroy both the soul and the body in hell, God. Jesus knew the force of idolatry and sinners very well. The nature of this sinful idolatry is caring more for about what human beings think about us with no regard for what God, who sees all, always thinks about us. Have you ever found yourself having more respect of other human beings than you do for the Lord Jesus Christ and his teachings? Have you publicly denied Jesus by agreeing with statements or teachings which minimize his atoning work on the cross by purporting many ways for us to get to God and to get to heaven? There's only one, only one. Have you ever denied Jesus by continuing to live in an unrepentant sin? I don't think you're exempt from such sins. I mean, after all, Jesus' disciples weren't, were they? After his resurrection from the dead, we see in Mark 16, verse 14, where it says that he appeared to the leaven themselves as they were reclining at a table, and he rebuked them for their unbelief and their hard hearts because they had not believed those who had saw him after his resurrection. Yet, it was these same disciples whom Jesus sent out into the world to proclaim the gospel to the whole of creation. Why? Why would he do that? Why would he send them? Because sinners such as they you and me have experienced forgiveness for all sins of denial, unbelief, hardness of heart, through faith in the person and the work of Jesus Christ. He still lives as Lord of all and comes to you daily with the good news a forgiveness of your sins. He comes to us gathered here with his presence, giving us the forgiveness of sins anew 
in our absolution and body and blood. His Holy Spirit works through the Word and the sacraments so that we can leave this place and go public, not ashamed of the gospel, but proud of the gospel. For it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, as we see in Romans 1, 16. Thus, going public in the confession of Jesus as Lord also reveals yourself as a sinner living under his forgiveness and his daily grace. What a wonderful thing. Since then, we have a great priest who has passed through heaven, through the heavens. Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast to our confession, for we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who in every respect has been tempted as you and I have, but yet without sin. So let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive the mercy and find grace to help us in times of need. Amen. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Let us prepare for the offering. We give thee but thine own, whatever the gift may be. All that we have is thine alone, a trust, O Lord, from thee. Amen.
Let us keep in our prayers this morning Bill and Terry Brown as they travel. Linda Mattingly has hip issues, and I can appreciate that. She spent two days this week on these zero-turn lawnmowers, so my hip hurts just from watching her. Also, let's keep Pastor and Susan in our prayers as they are traveling. They left this morning from San Antonio, and they are on their way to New Orleans, where they will celebrate the 4th of July. Uh, as a reminder, next Sunday, July the 9th, the Ladies of Our Redeemer will be meeting immediately after the service. I emphasize that because the letters are big. So there will be a luncheon and a work day to fill food pantry bags. There will also be an elders meeting next Sunday. I would ask the elders come prepared to talk about discipleship and how they are going to move forward with the words that I've brought you the last two Sundays. How are you going to do that in your zone? So come prepared to share that with me if you will. Also, we need volunteers to help prepare and serve supper on July the 9th for our baptism family night. There is a action, Thrive in Action project that has been approved for that and um, that will purchase the food. The study of uh, mere Christianity and the profound spiritual teachings of C.F. Lewis will continue next Sunday. So if you've missed Bible class the last couple of Sundays, uh, the C.S. Lewis program will begin again. I believe the rest of the announcements are self-explanatory. So... If you didn't notice, we're celebrating a holiday this weekend and this week, our Independence Day. I knew that this, this was going to be the Sunday that we normally have our big rah-rah patriotic service and our sermon, but I chose to continue on discipleship because our country means nothing if our Lord means nothing. So we have been armed with the armor of God. A lot of you sitting here today, a lot of you on live stream, including myself, have been involved in wars. We thank you for what you gave up. I will thank you more when you take up the armor of God and take his word out unto the world. Romans chapter 13, 1 through 7 reads, Let everyone be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except that which God has established. The authorities that exist have been established by God. Consequently, whoever rebels against the authority is rebelling against what God has instituted. And those who do so will bring judgment on themselves. For rulers hold no terror for those who do right, but for those who do wrong. Do you want to be free from fear of the one in authority? Then do what is right, and you will be commended. For the one in authority is God's servant for your good. But if you do wrong, be afraid, for rulers do not bear the sword for no reason. They are God's servants, agents of wrath, to bring punishment on the wrongdoers. Therefore, it is necessary to submit to the authorities, not only because of the possible punishment, but also as a matter of conscience. This is also why you pay taxes, for the authorities are God's servants who give their full time to governing. 
Give to everyone what you owe them. If you owe taxes, pay taxes. If revenue, then revenue. If respect, then respect. In honor, then honor. Please join me in prayer for our nation. Almighty God, you have given us this good land as our heritage. Grant that we remember your generosity and constantly do your will. Bless our land with honest industry, truthful education, and an honorable way of life. Save us from violence, discord, and confusion, from pride and arrogance, and from every evil course of action. Grant, Lord, that we who came from many nations with many different languages may become a united people. Support us in defending our liberties and give those to whom we have entrusted our land. When times are perilous, may our hearts be thankful. And in troubled times, do not let our trust in you fail. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. Please rise as we pledge our allegiance to the American flag. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Almighty God, 
You treasure your people for Christ's sake and give us your commandments to guide our ways. Grant that we, redeemed by his blood, may do all he has spoken. Lord, in your mercy. Holy God, send forth laborers to make known the gospel of your kingdom in Christ Jesus. Prosper the laborer of pastors, missionaries, and all church workers, that many people may hear, believe, and praise you. Lord, in your mercy. O righteous Father, from whom all fatherhood in heaven and earth is named, give your grace to the fathers and sons of your church. Inspire them by your own example and the example of your beloved Son to be perfectly united in faith, hope, and love. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our o God, our God, the earth still yields its increase under your care and prevention. Bless us with daily bread and give us wisdom as stewards of your creation. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our Lord, Heavenly Father, your Son demonstrated his power over sin by healing every disease and affliction. Give healing to those in need. Especially we pray today, O oh Lord, for Linda. Please, Lord, lay your healing hands upon her, and should it be your will, heal her pain. Deliver them according to your gracious will, O oh Lord, so that they may return to sharing your word with others. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we also pray for those who are in travel, Bill and Terry, Pastor and Susan, Claudia, and others. We ask, Lord, that you bless that travel and keep them safe and bring them home to us. Lord, in your mercy. O oh, blessed Lord, through Moses, you called a people to yourself, and from them you delivered up your own Son to be our Savior. By his sufferings and death, he has redeemed us, sinners, from our sins. By his resurrection, he has released us from the fear of death. Help us to live as your people, doing the good works for which we were created and praying with confidence the petitions and supplications of our hearts. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. <coughs> our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May the Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. Receive the benediction of our Lord. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. <laughs>
when we say, go in peace and serve the Lord, we mean put on your armor and be disciples of Christ. Amen.